Good morning, everyone. Hope all of you are having a great day. Welcome to what is the first in a series of conversations on cloud computing that we have planned for this year. Today's roundtable discussion on engineering cloud is the first session of the year under NASCOM's Cloud Advocacy Program. Through conversations like these, we hope to share with you how cloud is impacting various industries and how business functions are being adapted for the cloud. One of the most conventional of business functions is research and development, especially engineering research and development. The image that comes to mind is that of a physical lab with a lot of equipment and people hunched over tables strewn with technical drawings and drawing tools. But today, a number of these functions are getting heavily software-centric, driven by technologies like AR, VR, MR, simulation software, digital twins, etc. In today's context, by engineering cloud, we mean exactly that, carrying out engineering R&D functions on a cloud platform, including activities ranging from designing, prototyping, and testing to technical documentation, MRO, and aftermarket services. In today's discussion, we will explore not only what functions are moving to the cloud, but also how these are being engineered for the cloud. We have an eminent set of leaders and we will cover perspectives from independent software vendors, engineering service providers, and customer enterprises as well. To moderate this session, I have Parik Jain, who is the founder and CEO of EIIR Trend, a research and advisory firm focusing on engineering, IoT, Industry 4.0, and R&D. Parikh is a very well-known figure in the technology space and is a thought leader and prominent influencer on social media as well. He has over 20 years of experience and has worked in a variety of firms and roles across service providers, manufacturing enterprises, consulting and analyst firms before starting EIIR Trend. Parik has a BTEC from IIT Delhi and an MBA from IIM Bangalore. He also is an adjunct faculty at AIT Thailand, where he teaches Industry 4.0 courses for working professionals. He likes to re research and write about industry trends on engineering and Industry 4.0. He has authored over 200 research studies and provided over 500 media quotes to various global and Indian media outlets. He also likes to interact, discuss, and share information and insights on social media platforms where he has over 100,000 followers. I'm one of his followers and absolutely love all the engineering videos he shares on LinkedIn. Pari, great to have you with us. Over to you to take this session forward. Thank you, Diksha. And thank you, Nascom, to bringing us all together. Today, the topic we'll be discussing an emerging trend, engineering cloud. And to make it real, we have esteemed panel is here comprising of engineering service providers, ISVs, and enterprises. And hopefully the discussion here will inspire and guide enterprises either to start or accelerate their cloud journey. So the ne next question is like, how are your engineering cloud team organized in your organization? How do you collaborate internally? And what are the top skill requirements for engineering cloud? Maybe you can start with Prabhu and then with Indu. Uh, thanks, Parikh. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Prabhu Patruni, uh, heading the Digital Thread uh, Solutions Group in TCS, which is part of the IoT Digital Engineering Unit. And I'm responsible for digital thread growth and PLM growth. Um, so in TCS, um, what we follow is a two-layered uh, collaboration model with all the internal units. Um, the, the IoT and digital engineering unit itself has about four subunits, uh, which are intelligent products, connected plants, connected services, and digital thread. Uh, the skill and scale on digital technologies is available with each of these units. And uh, there are also other supporting functions uh, within the unit. One such supporting function is the uh, platform services group. Uh, this group comes with expertise in uh, in cloud computing, edge computing, high performance computing, AI, ML, uh, et cetera. And what they provide is they provide a common technology and platform enablement to all the units. So the first level of collaboration happens between the subunits, say, for example, digital thread with the platform services group. Now, uh, if there is a need for um, hyperscaler requirements or if there is a need for new cloud technology expertise, uh, then the units uh, 
on the, the, the digital threat unit and the platform services together. We go and collaborate with the TCS level units for Azure, AWS or Google. So there is a constant uh, bi-directional bi communication that is happening between these units in terms of information and expertise flow. Now, um, there are various uh, other collaboration touch points to these layers. Uh, there are collaboration touch points with the infrastructure services group. There are collaboration touch points with the chief technology office, uh, with uh, alliances in particular, and, and of course, with other digital units which are also operating on the cloud. Uh, this way, this collaboration is helping us to put together a very, very competitive bundled package to customers. And uh, this is how the collaboration happens uh, within our groups. Now, from a skill and scale perspective, the approach what we have taken is to uh, upskill the, the solution leaders, the architects, the developers within each of these units uh, to acquire capabilities, uh, not just in cloud, but uh, in, in uh, say, for example, AIML or in uh, other cognitive operations. So these people get externally certified at various levels, uh, be it at an architect level or be it at a developer level or infrastructure specialist. So these are the people who are today front-ending the um, engagements in, uh, in digital transformation space. At the same time, if there are some new skills required, uh, we drop these expertise from the platform services and from the uh, TCS level units. Now, coming to the top skills um, that are required, according to us, uh, I have, I've heard the panelists uh, highlighting a lot of challenges, and, and I concur and agree with those challenges. We are also going through these challenges with some of our customers. So, keeping all this in mind, um, I feel there are three critical skills uh, moving forward. One is in the Mm, low code, no code uh, development, apps development on cloud. So traditionally, uh, PLM has been a highly customized implementation all over the world because of uh, the nature of the processes, the nature of uh, the organizational behavior, a uh, lot of customization has gone. But now the need is that if you are able to bring down the customization, move towards a low code, no code area where the capabilities are available today, which were not there before. I think the deployments are going to be much faster, seamless, and uh, they're going to be much more lightweight. So we are heavily uh, focusing and investing in this area. The second one uh, we feel that is going to be very, very critical uh, is of course on the data part, but in particular, the data semantics and ontologies. Um, if we talk about digital thread and if you talk about enterprise data that is going to come from various functions, uh, we all know the heterogeneous nature of the data and the way they are formatted today with different, different standards. I think when digital thread has to become successful, um, all these ontologies have to orchestrate together. Whether it is on the AP 239, 242 side or whether it is other standards coming from the industry 402 side. So all of these have to be orchestrated. So data semantics, ontologies, um, data integrations, interoperabilities, and data science. All of these skills are going to come together to orchestrate and leverage data in a much more streamlined way than what is happening today. The other skill um, which uh, I think is important is uh, the organizational change skill, specifically for the engineering uh, community. At large, organization change management skills have been popular, flourishing. But when it comes down specifically to engineering community, I think it has to be highly contextual. Uh, and the context switching has to happen between the business units and the IT. So a, a skill that understands this space, uh, overlaying the complete organizational change management capabilities, is something that is going to be very important because the traction has to speed up especially on adoption of cloud. Um, and more important on the, on the data integration part, what we see also is emerging is that um, there is going to be a layer of data orchestration that is going to happen, which is going to bridge the gap between the ecosystem, uh, which is primarily going to drive the product innovation uh, moving forward and with the enterprises. So a layer of this uh, entire data-driven 
capsule, so may to call, uh, is going to emerge out, which is going to have a very strong play on the cloud. Um, in addition, I just want to share a couple of outcomes that we have seen from our engagement, recent engagements, uh, doing it on cloud. Uh, this is for a process industry. And um, the, the benefit that we have seen is in the supplier collaboration space, uh, especially on making material visibility to the suppliers so that uh, the long lead planning of uh, procurement of materials, ensuring that the materials are compliant with, with uh, the standards that in, in every region where they have to be applied. All of this uh, got accelerated because the complete knowledge base on materials and the processes related to them, which were deployed on PLM, they are made available on cloud. So the point is such small, small uh, wins and outcomes added up together, I think are going to speed up the traction. So the more and more such outcomes are required and uh, breaking it down into smaller components and addressing them, I think is going to be very, very critical. Similarly, in the automotive space, uh, one of the trend and the use case, what we are seeing is the close looping between the, the vehicle that is running on the field, uh, the diagnostics that is running continuously, and the design feature that is getting implemented on a continuous basis. So essentially the objective is to deliver a defect free feature, which is thoroughly validated before it is flashed onto the vehicle. So this closed looping is something that is uh, becoming more and more uh, uh, gaining traction. And that is why we see the automotive companies started implementing uh, MBAC way of thinking, uh, bringing the digital twins and connectivity to simulation and through MBAC and then running the whole thing in the form of a digital thread. So these are uh, two scenarios in addition I wanted to share. Thank you.